Welcome back to High School Bowl. Our second game matches the Dollar Bay Blue Bolts against the Houghton Gremlins. Now back to Jim Koski. And welcome back to the second half of tonight's second game. We have one team left to send on to our area diet aid. Who will it be? Well, it's one of these two teams. Let's meet them and let's start with the Dollar Bay Blue Bolts. Aubrey Swain, Jr. Cody Ringler, sophomore. Helen Bello Pavlovich, Jr. and team captain. Claire Torrey, Jr. Those are the Dollar Bay Blue Bolts. Now their opponents in our final Cerebral 16 game are defending champion Houghton Gremlins. George Manson, Sr. Brian Knudsen, Jr. Kate DeRocher, Sr. and team captain. Samuel Fain, Jr. Those are the Houghton Gremlins along with the Dollar Bay Blue Bolts, the two teams in the second half of tonight's high school bowl. <laughs> Now let's meet the alternate for Dollar Bay. It is Honorito uh, uh, Braganini. While the coaches for the two teams, for the Blue Bolts, it is Kathy Hill. For the Gremlins, it is Rebecca Keys. Good luck, coaches. Okay, one of you needs to move on to our uh, Erudite 8. Let's find out who and start with this first toss-up question. Historically, this country's capital was defended by artillery on Corregidor Island. Leyte Gulf is in the eastern uh, Manson. The Philippines. Philippines, correct for those 10 points. Okay, Houghton, here is your first bonus round for 10 points each. Answer these questions about how microbes can impact human health. Here's the first one. Uh, what worm-shaped organ in the abdomen was once considered vestigial and is now thought to act as a reservoir for beneficial bacteria? The appendix. Appendix? The appendix, yep. Uh, P. gingivalis, a bacterium linked to gum disease, may also contribute to what most common form of dementia? Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's disease, yep. And a newly discovered phylum called Melena bacteria is deficient in people with what condition? A degenerative disease of the motor system treated with a drug called L-DOPA? Parkinson's? Parkinson's disease, yep. So 30 points for Houghton in that bonus round. Here's your next toss-up question, teams. An equation named for this physicist has time-dependent and time-independent forms that govern a system's wave function. A flask of poison and a radioactive source in a Manson? Schrodinger. Schrodinger, correct for those 10 points. Okay, Houghton, here's your next bonus round. This car company sells more units of sausage than it does actual cars. For 10 points each, name this auto company that makes the Jetta and the Beetle. Volkswagen. Volkswagen? Volkswagen, yep. Volkswagen sausages are flavored with and named for this yellow-orange spice mixture generally made using turmeric, cumin, and coriander its powdered form was invented in Britain in the 19th century. Yeah, sure. Allspice. I don't think that's it. Allspice? Not Allspice, Dollar Bay. Curry. Curry, as in a curry-versed sandwich, yep. And Houghton, Volkswagen produces its curry-versed sausage at a plant in the lower German state with this name. Dresden is in another German state with this name. Saxony? Saxony, yep. So 20 points for Houghton, 10 points for Dollar Bay in that bonus round. Here's your next toss-up question, teams. This author wrote about a man who offends a witch by shouting, well done, Cuddy Sark, in his poem, Tam O'Shanter. The title creature shows that foresight may be vain in this man's poems about a timorous beastie. For 10 points, To a Mouse is a poem by what, uh, Manson? Robert Burns. Robert Burns, correct for those 10 points. <laughs> Okay, Gremlins, here's your next bonus round. Thomas Fuller likely invented the myth that this man chivalrously laid down his cloak so that Elizabeth I could walk over a puddle. For 10 points each, name this English sailor and courtier who made smoking tobacco fashionable in England. Sir Walter Riley. 
Walter Riley. Sir Walter Riley, yep. Riley sponsored this American colony, which was established in 1585, but was found totally deserted in 1590. Roanoke? Roanoke, yep. And Raleigh was imprisoned three times in this fortress complex on the north bank of the Thames. One building in this complex has housed the crown jewels since the 14th century. Tower of London? Tower of London, yep. So 30 points for the gremlins in that bonus round. Here's your next toss-up question, teams. After this group was founded in Pulaski, Tennessee, it named Nathan Bedford Forrest as its leader. Manson. The Ku Klux Klan. The Ku Klux Klan, correct for those 10 points. Okay, Houghton, here's your next bonus round. Europe is home to some extremely small countries. For 10 points each, Andorra lies between these two European countries whose border runs along the Pyrenees. Spain, Spain and France. Spain and France. Spain and France, yep. This country ruled by the Pope is the world's smallest country, both by population and by area. It is entirely contained within the city of Rome. Vatican City. Uh-huh. And this country is on the east bank of the Rhine and is sandwiched between Switzerland and Austria. Its capital is Vaduz. Lichtenstein. Lichtenstein. Lichtenstein, yep. So 30 points for Houghton in that bonus round. Here's your next toss-up question, teams. This instrument was played by Anton Weidinger, for whom Joseph Haydn wrote an E-flat major concerto. A player of this instrument wrote So What, which opens the, his album, Kind of Blue. Dizzy Gillespie uh, Bilopovich. <laughs> Trumpet. Trumpet, correct for those 10 points. Okay, Dollar Bay, here is your next bonus round. This NBA player received the first of his two NBA Finals MVP awards in 2014. For 10 points each, name this man who started his career with the San Antonio Spurs, who traded him for DeMar DeRozan in 2018. Steph Curry. Not Steph Curry, Houghton. Dwayne Wade. Nope. Max? Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard. Correct. Dollar Bay, Leonard won his second NBA Finals MVP in 2019 when he led this Canadian team to the title. Toronto. The Toronto Raptors, yep. And in the 2019 Eastern Conference playoffs, Leonard hit a buzzer beater in Game 7 to eliminate this team. Its stars include Ben Simmons. Celtics. Not the Celtics, Houghton. The Bucks. Not the Bucks, Max. Philadelphia 76ers. So 10 points for Dollar Bay in that bonus round. Here's your next toss-up question, teams. This state is home to the largest brick masonry structure in the U.S., Fort Jefferson, which is in its dry Tortugas Islands. The uh, Manson. Florida. Florida, correct for those 10 points. Okay, Houghton, here's your next bonus round. For 10 points each, name these kingdoms in West Africa. Here's the first one. Uh, Sunni Atta founded this West African empire, whose later head Mansa Musa supposedly caused a drop in the value of gold during a 1324 pilgrimage to Mecca. Mali. Mali, yep. In the 15th century, Sony Ali conquered much of Mali and formed this other kingdom, which was later ruled by Askia. Sangai. Sangai. Yeah, right. Yeah. Sangai. 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 The Sangai Empire, yep. And Mali and Sangai were preceded by this kingdom that coalesced in the 8th century around the city of Kumbi Sailai, which was sacked by the uh, Elmo Rabbids in 1076. Ghana. The Ghana Empire, yep. So 30 points for Houghton in that bonus round. Here's your next toss-up question, teams. One of these structures has a torus and two nodes and is denoted Z squared, while the other four of them have fourfold symmetry. Transition metals are found in these orbitals namesake block. For 10 points each, name these orbitals that come in groups of five 
and are filled after uh, Newt Manson. Uh, P orbitals. And are filled after S and P orbitals. Newtson. D orbitals. D orbitals, correct for those 10 points. Okay, Houghton, here's your next bonus round. This simple machine is divided into three different classes based on the locations of the load, effort, and fulcrum. For 10 points each, name this simple machine consisting of a beam rotating on a pivot. No, it's like a balance, right? Okay, yeah. Balance? Not a balance, dollar bay. No answer. How about a lever? Houghton, the distances between the load, effort, and fulcrum in a lever affect this quantity, the ratio of output force to input, input force. Efficiency. Efficiency? Not efficiency, dollar bay. Force. No, how about mechanical advantage? And Houghton, for this other simple machine, the mechanical advantage is the distance that the effort travels divided by the pitch. It can be thought of as an inclined plane wrapped around a cylinder. A screw. Yeah, I'm sure. Screw? A screw. Yep, so 10 points for Houghton in that bonus round. Here's your next toss-up question, teams. This city was the site of the world's first build, operate, and transfer construction project. The enormous machinery hall was constructed for the 1889 World's Fair in this city. Fang. Uh, Paris. Paris, correct for those 10 points. Okay, Houghton, here's your next bonus round. For 10 points each, answer the following about the Ark of the Covenant. Here's the first one. In the book of Exodus, the ark is constructed to hold this set of instructions, which includes, thou shall not covet. The, yeah. the Ten Commandments? Yep. Moses receives the Ten Commandments and instructions on how to build the Ark of the Covenant during his 40-day stay on this mountain. Sinai. Sinai. Sinai? Mount Sinai, yep. And later, Joshua leaves behind 12 stones when the Ark allows priests and then the Israelites to cross this other geographic feature. The Red Sea. Red Sea. Not the Red Sea, Dollar Bay. Jordan River. The Jordan River, yep. So 20 points for Houghton, 10 points for Dollar Bay in that bonus round. And we have come to the end of the first half of tonight's second game. Houghton with a 240 to 40 lead over Dollar Bay. We'll be back to chat with the students and find out who's moving on to our cerebr or our erudite eight right after this, so don't go far. Thank you, Jim. High School Bowl is the copyrighted format of College Bowl Company Incorporated. This program may not be reproduced in whole or in part without the expressed written consent of WNMU TV. If you wish to purchase a copy of High School Bowl, contact Public TV 13 at 1-800-227-9668 during regular business hours to order the game of your choice. Now, back to Jim for the second half of High School Bowl. And welcome back to the second half of our final Cerebral 16 match. As you can see, Houghton with the lead over Dollar Bay. We'll be back in a few minutes to find out who's moving on to our area diet eight. But as we've been doing during our second round, we want to chat with all of our students. And we're going to uh, do our good thing, bad thing uh, thing today where we talk about the good things and the bad things of living uh, where they live. And because most of the students live in the copper country, I thought this would be kind of interesting. Now, Aubrey Swain for Dollar Bay, you are a junior and you say the good thing about living where you live is something that you guys see like 10 months of the year, snow, right? <laughs> why, but why do you like the snow so much? I love going skiing and snowmobiling and ice skating and just all the winter activities. Uh, and do you do that because you enjoy doing it or you just want to wait until the snow's finally gone? I enjoy doing it and I haven't always lived places where it snows. <laughs> oh, okay, so you're taking advantage of that natural feature, right? Okay, uh, Cody Ringler, however, you say the bad thing about living about where you live is that you could walk around town and might not see anyone to hang out with, right? Uh, yeah, I live in Dollar Bay, which is pretty small, and <laughs> sometimes I'm just like, I go for a walk and I just don't see many people. 
<laughs> well, uh, you said dollar B is small, so your walk would take like, what, three minutes or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit longer than that. A little longer than that, but you still don't see anyone, right? Okay, uh, now Helen Bella Palavlich, uh, you also have a bad thing uh, about dollar, uh, now do you live in Dollar Bay? Hancock. Hancock, okay. And you say, quote, no one ever plows the roads after a big storm in the morning. <laughs> yes. Where I live, no one ever plows the roads because it's like a back road kind of. Mm -hmm. So it's just all snowy. So do you find yourself like literally trapped in your own home sometimes? Yes. <laughs> and I have to ask, what's that like? Not much to do. <laughs> <laughs> Just sitting there waiting for the plow to show up, yeah. right? Unless, of course, you decide to put on snowshoes or something. Okay. Uh, Claire Tory, however, you said that there is one great thing about living uh, there, and that is Richie's. So okay. tell me about Richie's. I know it's just a store you can go to. And, and what kind of store is it? <coughs> just got a bunch of stuff. <laughs> just, just your basically weird variety store, right? And that's one of yeah. the great things why you like living there. Okay, well, that's interesting. Now, let's move down to uh, Houghton. And uh, George Manson, you actually, uh, unlike the rest of your comrades, you live someplace outside of Houghton. Mm -hmm. And that's why you say that living in Barriga is a pain in the you-know-what, right? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it's a pain because you actually have to go to Houghton every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, like over half an hour commute back and forth every day. So, mm -hmm. and, and when the, the weather turns very Copper Country-like, are you actually able to make that commute? Uh, usually, but yeah, sometimes, no. <laughs> <laughs> Good excuse if you want to get out of school, though, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Brian Knudsen, you are a junior. You say one of the great things about living in Houghton is that you have a university campus there, right? Yeah, so there's a lot of opportunities. Um, with, uh, with the university campus, there's a lot of activities that go on in Michigan Tech that you can, you can go and see. And sometimes you can take like classes there too. So mm -hmm. that's and there aren't a lot of people who actually have the chance to live in a university town. And you should take advantage of everything yeah. they have while you're there. Yeah. Now, uh, Kate DeRochers, uh, much, like, uh, much unlike Aubrey from Dollar Bay, you say that you do not like the 10 months of snow, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like cute and fun on Christmas morning. Like, I love a white Christmas. But then, like, in April when we have snow days, I'm like, okay, this is a little bit ridiculous. Can I just go to school now? <laughs> have so. you ever uh, talked to your parents and say, Mom, Dad, can we move someplace where there's no snow? A lot, yeah. <laughs> and I can see who won that side of the conversation, <laughs> right? Okay. Finally, Sam Fang, you are a junior. and. You like living in Houghton for a reason that I like to visit Houghton, the geography. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, I think uh, we're fortunate enough to have like a, quite a unique place. Mm -hmm. Like we have lakes are all around us, we're on a peninsula, and there's um, there's like forests everywhere. It's not like Kansas where it's just a block with like <laughs> weed everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have the forests, you have the lakes. I personally like the hills in Houghton too. Yeah. Just uh, the fact that you know, if you need to uh, say walk up from uh, US 41, you need to walk up to like the SDC, you get like your total workout in that one walk. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, uh, those are the uh, Houghton Gremlins and the Dollar Bay Blue Bolts, the two teams in the second half of tonight's high school bowl. Now let's move on to the questions with our next toss-up question. At the start of this book, a boy hammers a tent rope to a wall and chases a dog with a fork. A forest grows in the bedroom of this book's protagonist uh, who wears a white tori. Where the wild things are? Where the wild things are, correct for those 10 points. Okay, Blue Bolts, here's your next bonus round. In 2018, a Broadway musical debuted based on this 2004 film in which Ms. Norbury is maligned as a drug dealer in the Burn book. For 10 points each, name this comedy movie in which Lindsay Lohan tangles with a high school clique called The Plastics. B-Girls. Uh-huh. Ms. Norbury, the calculus teacher, is played by this actress who also wrote the script for Mean Girls. Jane. No, not Jane Houghton. Tina Fey. The great Tina Fey, yep. And Dollar Bay, a popular joke from Mean Girls, which was referenced in a 2013 White House tweet, is the character's, character Gretchen's attempt to make this word a slang term for cool. Fetch? Very not fetch, but yes, correct for those 10 points. So 20 points for Dollar Bay, 10 points for Houghton in that bonus round. 
Here's your next toss-up question, teams. This company was sued by Disney over its Betamax recorders. In 2003, it released the first device to play Blu-ray discs, which this company now uses in its video game consoles. Uh, Manson. Samsung. Uh, for 10 points, name uh, Fang. Uh, Sony. Sony, correct for those 10 points. Okay, Houghton, here's your next bonus round. Give examples, or I should say, examples of this concept include oxygen gas and ozone. For 10 points each, give this term for different physical terms, uh, different physical forms of the same element, which result from differences in bonding and or intermolecular forces. Allotropes? Allotropes, yep. This element's allotropes include diamonds and graphite. Carbon? Carbon, yep. And the most common allotrope of sulfur contains this many atoms in an orthohombic ring. Wait, is it six or eight? Yeah, it's six. 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 Not six, Dollar Bay. Seven? Nope, how about eight? So <laughs> 20 points for Houghton in that bonus round. Here's your next toss-up question, teams. This TV channel features a panel of women joined by one lucky guy on the talk show Outnumbered. Gretchen Carlson filed a sexual harassment lawsuit against this channel's first CEO, Roger Ailes. Uh, Tucker Carlson and uh, Manson. Fox. I need a little more than that. Fox News. Fox News Channel, correct for those 10 points. Okay, Houghton, here is your next bonus round. At the end of this story, Gabriel Conroy realizes that his Aunt Julia Morcan will soon be shade. For 10 points each, name this story in which Gabriel watches the snowfall while thinking about the hill where Michael Furry laid buried. The Gift of the Magi. Not the Gift of the Magi, Dollar Bay? No answer. How about... The Dead. The Dead is a story by this pioneer of modernist literature who wrote the sprawling 1922 novel Ulysses. James Joyce. James Joyce, yep. And Joyce included The Dead in a collection of stories about the inhabitants of this capital city, which was also the setting of Ulysses. Dublin. Dublin. Dublin, yep. So 20 points for Houghton in that bonus round. Here is your next toss-up question, teams. This author pitted the revolutionary Piotr uh, uh, Verkhenhovsky against the nihilist Nikolai Stravagin in his novel, Demons. In another of his novels, the pawnbroker Al Alionia uh, Manson. Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky, correct for those 10 points. Okay, Gremlins, here is your next bonus round. The nickname Doughboy was given to many members of this military force. For 10 points each, give the three-word name of the force of the U.S. Army formed in World War I and commanded by John J. Pershing. The American Expeditionary Force. The American Expeditionary Force? Correct. Uh, the AEF's major engagements included the Battle of Contigny and the Second Battle of the Marne in this year. Those Allied victories led to an armistice on November 11th of that year. 1919. 1919. Not Wide. Spanish flu or Spanish? Spanish flu. Spanish flu. Spanish flu, yep. 20 points for Houghton, 10 points for Dollar Bay in that bonus round. Here's your next toss-up question, teams. Operators of these institutions include Management and Training Corporation and Core Civic. California banned them in October of 2019. Unions of guards often oppose these places, which are paid per diem for each inmate. For 10 points, uh, DeRoches. Prison. Uh, for 10 points, name this type of for-profit correctional facility. A fang. A private prison. Private prisons, correct for those 10 points. 
Okay, Gremlins, here's your next bonus round. This medium was the specialty of American printmaking firm Courier and Ives. For 10 points each, name this type of printing that gets its name, which is derived from the Greek for stone writing, from the fact that it originally used limestone plates. Printing press. Not printing press, dollar bay. <laughs> Petroglyphs. No, how about lithography or lithographs? Houghton, among this Dutch artist's many lithograph prints is relativity, which depicts sets of impossibly interlocking staircases. Escher. Escher, yep. And in the 1950s, lithographs were a common medium of this artist, whose earlier Cubist paintings include Guernica. Picasso. Pablo Picasso. Yep. So 20 points for Houghton in that bonus round. <laughs> and we have come to the end of tonight's uh, game. Houghton is moving on to the Erudite 8, defeating Dollar Bay by a score of 370 to 80. Well, first of all, Dollar Bay, thanks for making the trip from the Copper Country and putting up the good fight. The great thing, Aubrey, Cody, Helen, and Claire, you guys are all underclassmen, so we'll get the pleasure of seeing you again next year. We do look forward to that. Well, Gremlins, I know this is familiar territory for you, but you're heading back to the Erudite 8, our quarterfinals. You'll be taking on the Gladstone Braves in that match in a couple of weeks, and that should be an incredible one, so we do look forward to that as well. Uh, before we leave you for tonight, we do want to thank our officials for tonight's game, our timer and scorekeeper is some guy we picked up off the street, while our judge is an emeritus professor of English at NMU, Beverly Merthern. So thanks, Bob and Beverly. Make sure you join us again next week as we kick off our quarterfinals, our Erudite 8, when Superior Central takes on Marquette and Calumet goes up against Munising. Don't forget to like High School Bowl on Facebook and remember as someone much, 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 much wiser than I once said, nothing you learn is ever wasted. I'm Jim Kosky and we will see you again next time for High School Bowl. The preceding program was produced by WNMU-TV, Northern Michigan University Public Television, and studios located in Elizabeth and Edgar Hardin Hall. Major production funding for High School Bowl is provided by the Ray and Peg Hervenin Foundation and by Janice Mills of Escanaba and by the Donald and Audrey Anderson Foundation. Local support for High School Bowl is made possible by 18 Upper Peninsula credit unions, including Barriga Community Federal, Iron Mountain Kingsford Community Federal, Integra First Federal, Settlers Federal, Torch Lake Federal, and Chippewa County. By Petrocelli and Wara, attorneys at law serving Michigan and Wisconsin, supporting our high school students in their quest for excellence and by Johnson Controls, creating buildings and environments that help people achieve, because when buildings work better, people work better. Johnson Controls, helping people achieve. High School Bowl is a production of Public TV 13, in partnership with the Regional Educational Service Agencies and Intermediate School Districts of the Upper Peninsula.